The overall is completely asymmetric. The four tires are completely different. We may think, but we have bad memories, that we met in 2003. Maybe. 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 <laughs> Hey everyone, so today I'm gonna talk about drivers and engineer relationship. So that's Olivier Boisson. Hello. Olivier Boisson, I guess in English. <laughs> in English, yeah. Oliver Drink. Or Tintin, yeah. uh, Tintin, for the most friendly ones. Olivier has been my engineer in IndyCar since I arrived. Telco and racing last year and on radio sport this year. Yep. Yeah, make sure that if you like the videos, you subscribe, uh, you like, you leave us a comment. As always, happy to talk about it, reply, answer, and film more. Okay, and I guess I guess everyone knows what an engineer is, right? Set up the car. But yeah. I want to go more into details between a Formula One engineer and a race engineer, an uh, Indy car engineer, and which type of engineer we have. Because you are my race engineer. Is yeah. that how we say it in, uh, in Indy car? Yes, race engineer. Yeah. Race engineer. What do you do for me? I make sure. I know. I know. I know what Olivier does for me, but I make sure the car's ready. Uh, make sure the setup. Just developing the setup, trying to make sure you know everything is organized between us, the crews, and talking with the crew chief. Make sure all the setup is sent to those guys, and also you know making sure we adjust everything and we tune on the car, do some simulation, and making sure it's all you know optimized. Next to you, there are more engineers, right? Yeah. So two more. We've got yeah two more. The, the performance engineer. Okay, that's that's the same as Formula One, so I'm not lost on that one. Yeah, and what we call the DAG. The DAG, which is electronic engineer. Right? Yeah, the guy is in charge, the person in charge of. Yeah, because for us it's a it's Lizzie, it's a, it's it's a girl, it's yeah. a lady, and she's doing a good job. Yeah, and so she's in charge of all the electronics on the car, make sure the data acquisition system is working, and you know get, we get all the data and uh, everything's calibrated right. And the button are doing what it's supposed yep. to do on the all steering the steering wheel. wheel, all those things, yeah. And then on top of that, we've got a Honda engineer. Yep. That for the engine. After the engine. And a strategist. Yeah, strategist. The strategy of the race. So yep. that's on the pit stand. That's how much people we have. Obviously, in Formula One, there's a lot more engineers behind the scene. But in the car, that's, that's what we have. I guess, you know, the relationship between drive and engine is not easy because I can tell you that's yellow and you're gonna like, well, that's yellow or orange. And when I drive the car, it's the same thing. I can say, okay, the car is uh, oversteer on entry, but what do I call entry at the corner? What do I call oversteer? Yep. What do I call a snap and then understeer and so on? So that's where you have really to re build the relationship and for you to translate those words into mathematics, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, everybody have a feel different things in the car. Every driver have different way to describe how they feel things and what they feel. So our job is to make sure we understand that by building that relationship, we try to be, you know, it gets easier and easier as we go to understand what you mean and what you want and how you feel things so we can try to adjust the car accordingly. We may think, but we have bad memories, that we met in 2003. Maybe. 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 <laughs> You're from France, not yep. from so in Geneva, Switzerland. Did you always want to become an engineer or yeah. was it something... I like racing, just yeah. always like racing. As a kid, just, you know, walking on cars and motorcycle, bicycle, always wanted to do stuff engineering-wise and mechanic-wise. So, And racing is, is fun because, you know, it's fast paced, it's pretty quick, you can make decisions, make things happen pretty fast and, and, you know, get to travel, which is really fun too. So yeah. So you, st you started in Europe, in France. Yep. And then very quickly you moved in the USA. Yes, the as soon as I was done with school, yeah, 2004, just with a backpack. And then um, you went straight into IndyCar, which is quite yeah. rare, right? Yeah, at the time it was called Champ Car. They had the whole IndyCar, Champ Car split. And yeah, and I got hired to uh, build the shock absorber dampers for an IndyCar team, Champ Car team, yeah. Yeah, so what you have to know, IndyCar is everyone's the same car. The only part we can develop and is the dampers. And they actually do a lot. So Olivier, you started that way. Last year at DaleCon, you were doing most of the dampers. Um, Always doing the design and some development. And now at Andretti, we have a bigger team and more people doing it. but still be involved in it and participating. So that's something we should have probably mentioned in terms of the engineers that we have. We also yep. have engineers for the dampers. Yeah, right? yeah, we have that a lot they, of people um, in the background doing dampers, design, development and simulations. Yeah. We also have some people for aer aerodynamic, but yep. that's compared to Formula 1 there's nothing, right? In Formula 1 you've got, I don't know, 50, 100, 200 engineers of aerodynamic. We have one. One, two. And they only look really at ovals. That's the only place where... Everything else is maxed on force. Yeah. Pretty much. And, and IndyCar is very easy in, in aerodynamic, but overall is really where you want the car to be set up nicely, and that's really why you feel the downforce, because, you know, it, it is driving at 200 plus miles an hour, and that's where downforce is the job. Yep. 
What else do we have in the team? I guess maybe we can speak about the difference between ovals, street course and road course yeah. because that's that's very particular to, to IndyCar. To IndyCar. Yeah. I mean racing in all those type of tracks, the main thing is different tires, you know, like the street course tire is a softer tire, road course tire a bit stiffer, but it's pretty, like from people from Europe, it's pretty normal, you know, you have like same tires at the front and same tires on the rear on both sides. The overall is completely asymmetric. The four tires are completely different from compound to stiffness, structure, everything. Diameter, size Diameter, of the tire is different. Yeah, yeah, because on the overall, the car doesn't have a differential, it's like a spool. So basically, the car turns because the right side tire is bigger than the left side, so naturally, the the car wants to turn there is no differential in the car it's like a solid rear axle but the whole car is completely asymmetric from cambers toes springs and the tires everything is completely asymmetric and the car naturally wants to turn without any input so how did you i mean because that's you know that's quite crazy yeah in terms of engineering that the car doesn't want and, and one of the first questions i asked when i came to indycar why don't you make the car straight and not turn in the corner on ovals and you just told me it's slower yeah so it the is. car the car has to turn on its own which is very weird. So how do you how do you learn how to set up a car on ovals? Because when you when you see the setup shit, it's completely crazy, right? Yeah, Every... it is. It is crazy, but on the, in the engineering world, it's also in a way very simple because it's a very long, steady state corner. You don't really care about the straight line. Beside, you know, like drag, and what we care about is how to make the car like carry more speed in the corner, not scrubbing speed, and that's why it likes. Every time you give an input to the car, you're kind of slowing it down because you're binding the car. So that's why the car, when it turns naturally, it carries more speed. It's a very long, like at the speedway, you have four corners. They are very long, steady state corner, which is a lot, in a way, from an engineering standpoint, a lot easier than a quick, you know, braking really hard. The car is a bit on the edge and, you know, very quick, bumpy, you know, like a, like a street course where the corner don't last very long. On the speedway, it's a long time. And, and so it makes things a little bit easier to understand because each wheel does very something very specific and each part of the corner in a way on the engine once you understand the concept it's pretty easy in a okay way. so that's a really good thing yes because the first time I got an oval you're like we're gonna change one spring that's something you never do no nope. on road course or street course or whatever so tell me what the four wheels are doing because they all have a different role in the corner yeah so let's start front left what does front left does very little okay front left wrong, is, wrong one <laughs> front, front left is very lightly loaded it does it help a little bit on the mid exit of the corner to finish a corner if you have a bit of understeer but it's very lightly loaded it does very little job and so it's it's there because we need four wheels but it, it doesn't do as much job as the other three okay so then front right the front right does a lot i mean that's you know that's the one like it gives you confidence when you turn in in entry like how the car feels getting into the corner to the apex and that's you know the one you know like at the speedway when you know the tire getting hot and stuff you saturate that right front and it gets really hot and that's how you you slide and you go up the track toward the wall that big understeer okay. big wash so that's the, the right one front. we can adjust with the way jacker in the car we can put plus or yeah minus yeah we have the weight jacker in the car so you can adjust the weight so if you have a car that's a bit loose you put a bit more weight on that right front tire to secure the car and if you have too much understeer because maybe you saturate that right front tire you can move a little bit of weight or cross weight to the left side okay. then let's go rear left because the rear left right is a very important one yeah but the left rear is also pretty important because it does a lot for the security of the entry also because mid corner mid exit it's more about the right rear but the entry the left rear especially when you start playing with the left rear toe you really can control the rotation and how the car feel once you're turning in the corner so it's it's a very important time front left does no much no front right does mid to exit yeah on the steer yeah rear left does entry at the corner yeah and then rear right is the one as a driver is the only one you would you want to be confident with because yeah. that's that's the one that gives you all the feeling yeah it does a lot it's it's what control basically the feel of the driver how comfortable they feel in the car because you we say you're almost driving out of on the right rear tire all the time so if you feel like the car is moving a bit when you load and that's the one you get the most vertical load in the corner so if this one doesn't work very well it doesn't give the driver confidence it's not like a street course where you drive to the limit or over the limit of the tire on the overall you never really drive over the limit of the tire especially well, if right you do, rear because if if you do you pretty much 
much, you know, it's, it's a bad day. So you drive a, a bit under the limit of the tire. And the only thing the driver gets is that feel of how close to the limit can they get. And, and that tire do a lot for the mid exit of the corner, the middle, and also you can play with the right, the right toe and that give you a feel of rotation mid corner that's, that's very powerful. Yeah, it can be very disturbing if it's not, if it's not good. Yeah, because as a driver, it's very strange to the car rotating itself without you putting an input that is normally oversteer, yep. on normal. But on oval, it's, it, it's a different feel. So it's how much comfortable you can be with the, that thing doing the job yep. for you without you putting a steering yep. input. But how much is it that it's because of the car does that? How much is it because it's actually sliding and you are yep. over the limit? Yes. You say it's easy. For me, it's very complicated setup yep. on oval. And if it's windy, if it's hot, if it's cold, it's always going to be different. Yeah, the, track, the car is very sensitive to the racetrack and all the condition change for sure. When you go into qualifying day, how do you decide how much you're gonna trim the car, remove downforce, trying to make it fast in a straight line? It's mostly based on condition. We have a lot of historical data and that's why we have all those days where we practice, where basically every day when we're gonna trim to try to do a qualify attempt, we're gonna you know, look at the weather, find the conditions and try to step through the different level of downforce and, and find where we start to get not comfortable. And there's a diminishing return where you start taking a lot of downforce out, but not so much drag. So at some point, based on the condition, if it's a windy day, you're gonna put more downforce. If it's like a nice day and cool day, you're gonna trim a lot but it's a lot we have a lot of historical data plus we have all those practice you know when you start to get to like fast friday here and you know we start really to step through all the different level of downforce to know what we're good at and what what we think is right one of the very big difference between indycar and formula one is the calendar right yeah and now we're on for a very long stretch of races with yes. very different setups so we did just in the grand prix yeah indy qualifying indy 500 three weeks in a row yep. the week after we go to detroit which is one of the most bumpy track in the world yep. with the very weirdest grip you can have and then we go to road america mm -hmm. which is like a spa francorchamps of the u.s yep. amazing but big so we got five weekends in a row with no time off yep. really no nope. uh, good thing is that we stay within the us so we don't travel too far yep. but yeah we had to prepare so much setup before we actually got into it because then it's not the same car on speed and road course yep. it's two different cars that we have and then we have one week off and then another three races or so yeah and then we have some testing in between like iowa very bumpy oval very bumpy oval yeah so yes yeah, it's, it's a busy schedule we finish early september 11 championship is over we're gonna reinvent the wheel during the winter I guess pretty much yeah. so it's too too long of a time off the time off yeah trying to make work on all the things you don't have time to work during the season take a lot of notes during the season of all the things you wish you would have time to do and you do them in the winter basically well I guess that's a good insight of what is our life like what the relationship with your engineer how you transfer someone's feeling that already you have to put into words and those words are not to go to Olivier Olivier has got to put those words into mathematics and then those mathematics have to go on the car and it's a circle like this in IndyCar because there's so much more mechanical change you can do compared to Formula 1 where it's all aero driven I feel like the relationship with the engineer is even more important than it was in Formula 1 where you know if the, the Haas the last two seasons was under steering from the aer aerodynamic map and there was nothing we could do to get rid of that it was just the way it is while it's here between the, the roll center and the geometry and the camber and the dampers and so on we can actually make it to our liking and that's yep. why i feel that the lap time of everyone is super tight yes everyone's got to a place where he likes the car yeah and everybody's different you know even between our teammates we don't we have differences yeah, between the setup yeah. so i guess if you want to be an engineer one day and you want to send your cv send it you know i think it's a it's a great place to learn it's a great place to have racing fun and i uh, hope you like the video as always please make sure you subscribe you like you comment and i'll see you very soon